Hey developers, so today we're gonna do something fun. I'm gonna take a look at React as a Vue developer. So if you don't know, I am a huge Vue.js fan. I've written books on it, I've done courses on it, I've done lots of tutorials on it, and so I thought it'd be fun if I jumped into the shoes of a React developer and kind of compare and contrast it to how Vue works. So in this video, I'm gonna create a real basic app. I'm just gonna kind of walk through it. I am gonna cut and edit this video so you're not gonna see every single part of me kind of searching and, and learning. But uh, yeah, we'll take a look at it. And also just for uh, transparency's sake, I have done a little bit of React in the past before Hooks was there. And I've done quite a bit of Angular as well. So I thought it, this will be not a complete blind jumping into React, but I think this will be interesting for people who are Vue developers, or even if you're a React developer, to see my responses and how I think of how React works. And also I think in the future I'll do a bigger deep dive where we compare every single feature of Vue to React. I really want to create a video like that, but I thought this would be a nice fun one and to see uh, how it goes. So if you guys like these type of videos, leave a comment below, especially if I get something wrong with my what I'm doing within, within React. So make sure you leave a comment below, let me know. I really appreciate it. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you guys like videos on React, Vue.js, all that. I appreciate it. So I'm going to jump in here. I have my getting started with React. I went ahead and Googled this. By the way, I did take some inspiration from this video from Ben Awad. He did a jumping into Vue.js for the first time, and you guys really liked that video when I responded to him, so I thought this would be a good follow-up. All right, so I have my Visual Studio code installed here. I did install one snippet. I installed, I have ESLint, but I also installed this React.js uh, snippet. This one right here just so I can like more quickly create React files. I don't know if it was the best one to, to install. You know, leave a comment below if you think I should install some different type of React extensions. And then I went ahead and just Googled this React document. But I think looking through, trying to start off with React for the first time, and I know my head's in the way. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can start it with React. You can use with these online playgrounds like CodePen, Code Sandbox, Glitch. I'm Personally, I really like Stack Blitz. I, uh, I actually met the co-founder of it at a conference a while back. But uh, I kind of want to start with Create React App, which is like the tooling that a lot of people use to create React apps, which is funny because uh, I, you know, one thing that we always say in the Vue world is Vue is it's a, the progressive framework, so you can easily add it to your app, an existing app. And you can sort of do the same thing with React, These, you can see right here, you can just simply add the HTML script tags to your app and you can just add React in, which I guess you could call that sort of progressive. The only thing I think which is not great is uh, you can add JSX with it and by adding in a JSX uh, script tag, but it has a big warning that you shouldn't use this in production because it's gonna be really slow and doesn't really work well. And I think if you, are trying to progressively add React, you probably want to add in JSX and it's kind of too bad that it's it recommends that this may not be the best way to do it. In fact, I think it says right here, this approach is fine for learning and creating simple demos. However, it may make your website slow and isn't a, suitable for production. So when you're ready to move forward, remove this new script tag and type text babble attributes you've added instead in the next section and we'll set up JSX preprocessor to convert all your script tags automatically. So that's interesting. I, you know, I think that if you really want to add JSX, you probably don't want to incrementally add it this way. I mean, just from the documentation. Well, you could incrementally add uh, Vue.js into your app by just putting in the script tag or you know, linking back to the downloaded JavaScript compiled file for Vue. So that's just my quick take on that when people say, well, React is progressive, can be progressively added. I know if you disagree with me, leave a comment below. It seems like it's not quite the same. Uh, so uh, one thing I was just looking through this, they have a great, a, a ton of beginner resources. I like this tutorial right on the create a getting started page because it kind of jumps into, I think what most people think of when they start React is to use the create React app. I mean, they do have a basic one just using the HTML and using the, the tags, but this is kind of what I want to start off with. Uh, to begin with. Now I have Node and Yarn already installed on my system here. So if you know, don't know how to install that, I would certainly you know go to the Node website or Yarn website and install it. And I have version, I think 12 or 14. And so it looks like it's just as easy as going npx create react 
app and then putting the, I don't know, app name. I'm just call it hello world. And so this will just take a moment and it'll install, you know, while it's installing, I will say compared to the view world, the view CLI I think is, is a quite a bit better uh, CLI tool because it, gives you a whole bunch of options when you're creating a new view app. So you'll get an option to add your router in right away, add in Vuex, even add in a component library you may think of like Tailwind or something like that. Uh, and even get ask you if you want to add SAS or some of these other real popular CSS libraries. So it's really cool that it has that all built in. It even has something called view UI, which uh, allows you to have like a graphical interface when you create your view apps and you can even search for plugins and install them. There's a whole plugin system that's available in the view ecosystem using view CLI. So you can kind of view add and then a plugin and it'll install the files and, and it'll scaffold out kind of some beginner uh, files for you. I don't know if that exists in React. It doesn't seem like, at least with the create React app, that doesn't exist at all. Maybe someone out there leave a comment below if there is like something similar on the React side. So I think that, you know, is a little bit of a downside. I guess you can alternatively think that maybe that's a good thing because you're not as, it's not prescriptive of, as Vue. Like Vue has uh, some things that you probably should use in every single Vue app. Like, uh, like probably if you're using any sort of routing, you use the Vue router. On the other hand, in the React side, it's a little bit more open less opinionated you could call it so you can put in your own router and you can put in your own libraries that you want but then again for a beginner you know something like Vue CLI might be great because the view uh, right when you start it it kind of gives you the option to add everything right off the bat you don't have to npm install it and look up the documentation to figure out how to get it added okay so it went ahead and created our new react app so i will do as it says i'm going to just do uh npm start instead of npm instead of yarn, but it's same thing. Cool, so here is my new, it looks like it's running. Here it is, so cool. So it, it opened up and I have a React app, which is great. So let's take a look at what's inside this folder. So here is our kind of starter file here, and you can see here it's using JSX, using this kind of functional components that is what normal people use in the React ecosystem nowadays. Uh, you know, one thing right away as a Vue developer I see is that instead of using the double curly bracket mustache syntax, it's the single bracket. So that, that right away is a little bit different. And uh, now instead of having class, we use class name. Well, I mean, that'd be a little different there too. Obviously, uh, this is a really simple example, so I don't see any, uh, you know, normally what you would see in a view app is directives, and obviously this doesn't have any sort of thing like that. Okay, so I deleted out everything in here, and restart it, and I have just a big empty space, so I'm gonna try to do a hello world. Let's see here, hello world. Cool, so here's my hello world, seems to work great. Uh, you know, right away I noticed like if I do an H5, I'm not getting my Emmet working correctly, which I think I remember someone saying that you have to set a setting in VS Code to change that. So let me okay, see. so I need to add this edit include JavaScript uh, Emmet include languages JavaScript JavaScript React. So I'm gonna open my UI settings. Let me see if I can open it as a JSON. This, oh, this is my default settings. Let me open my preferences here. I'm just gonna save it here, updated. And let me see if now I can do this. So H5, let's see here, I'm gonna save it, H5. Okay, cool, now Emmet's working inside my VS Code. I guess if you guys run into that, you'll know why. So now I can do this. And I'll close this out. Cool, my hello world's still working. So let's say I want to try to um, create a component and then pass things to it. But you know, first thing I'm thinking of, though, wouldn't it be nice to use an API and grab some information and display it? So just a really simple API. And what I'm thinking about is if you know Reddit has its own API, and all you need to do is uh, you do a slash r slash picks and then you can do dot json 
and then it'll kind of format this. Yeah, you can see here, this is a big JSON document that it returns. So what I'm thinking of, uh, just kind of my first whirl around in this React world, is to see if I can download this and grab the images from Reddit R Picks, which is a popular subreddit that just has people posting pics. Now in the, in the back in the day, I remember we used to have, um, the way you would do this in Vue, and I think the old way you do in React is you would have these lifecycle hooks, like a mounted lifecycle hook or created lifecycle hook. And then you could, as soon as the component loads, you would automatically download uh, the data and then you can assign it somewhere. So uh, I think this is what I'd want to do to start off with. And I know that probably the best way to do that is something um, using the use effect hook. I th um, just from what I remember. And if I look up React hooks, and it has, I think use effect is in one of these, He's using the effect hook. So the effect hook lets you perform side effects and functional components. So this is kind of uh, the way to do it now. So in Vue, you would still use a lifecycle hook. And even um, if you're using the new composition API, they actually still have lifecycle hooks that you can use inside there. So using this use effect and using all hooks is a little bit different. It takes a little while to get my head wrapped around, but it doesn't look too difficult here. So obviously there's two things that would make sense is this use state and use effect. So let me, uh, you know, let me copy and paste. Let me grab this from React. So I'm gonna put a comma here, my use state and use effect. And now I should be able to use that. And by the way, use state looks like it's pretty simple to set up too. Oops, close that. So uh, I just do um, const and then it has two values, right? Set count and set count, for example. So in this case, I don't know, I could put info, set info, and then I'll have this use state and then I'll have the default of where I wanna set it. And I just wanna set it to like an empty array because we're gonna have an array of items in here. And then I'm gonna have an error and the set error which is my other state. And so this, I kind of think of like as a view developer, when I'm thinking about this, this is almost like using the composition API and using ref, which is a way to make a, an item reactive. So it feels like we're sort of creating reactive elements in here that we can set and update reactively because it's state that can be updated in the DOM. Um, that's kind of how I feel uh, about it. You know, let me know in the comments below if, if that's not what you've, think of it. Okay, so let's see if we can uh, actually connect to an API. And it looks like the best way of doing that from Googling around is we can use this use effect. So I'm gonna add in one more, uh, yeah, right, use effects right there. And it looks like you use effect, and then it has like a callback in here, and then we can do something. So uh, I think we can do a fetch. I'm gonna do a fetch to reddit.com slash r.pix.json. And then from there, I know we grab it, we can do a then. We can also use async await, but it looks like, I'm, like this is fine for what we're doing. And we're gonna grab the JSON out of that. And then finally, we should have a response, a result. And I'm gonna console log that result but I'm going to also see if I can set the state. So I can, or set info. So I can do set info here, and that'll be result data.children. And now we should have information in info. So if I just put info, once again, I put double curly brackets and save it. Objects are not valid. Oops. So it's kind of giving me a, it looks like giving me an error because I tried to use an object and you can't just output it like this. I wonder if you do like, now I think what we want to do then is we're going to have to do some sort of uh, map. And I think uh, you can do it a, a V map on this, a map that is. So to do that, I think I do need to do info.map and then that'll have another uh, value that comes out of it. And I want to see if I can just grab the D dot data dot thumbnail. Um, I know I'll put it as a h1 tag. Move it over. Here, I'll just move it into here. Let's see, does that work? 
Okay, object net values react for objects keys. If you meant to render a collection, use a div. Okay, um, looks like it doesn't like what we're doing here. So maybe I have to set a key to it. And I'll put d.data.thumbnail. I'll save it. Object now values right. Use an array instead. Um, okay, I gotta delete this. Okay, so now I just see the same thing over and over because I forgot to put the curly brackets around it. Okay, cool. So it looks like we have all this information here, which is good. Delete this. So now I could probably be a better idea. Maybe I can do an li here and then I don't know I can make, let's see here. Uh, I'll put, I'll add the key to this. I guess the key is supposed to be unique, but I don't know. I can just put it to d.data.thumbnail. I think those are unique. And now I can do an image, and the source would be d.data.thumbnail. You know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a, a title here. So I don't know, put a paragraph text, and, and I'll make sure. Don't, so as a view user, I usually put quotes around everything. I don't need to here. So now P here would be d.data.title. Let's see if this works. Okay, so it looks like we have titles and we have pictures. So it looks like we've gotten, you know, we've been able to talk to our API and have a very simple app here. Now, if I want to add some styles to this li, you do style, and it looks like you put double curly braces, um, double curly braces, it's almost like we're doing view, and then we can put in, I know, color red. Okay, and if we wanted to remove the bullet points, I think we do list style. It looks like you do it in camel casing here, and then we'll do none. We'll save it. Okay, so now here's all our titles and the pictures underneath it. Uh, that's really cool. So let's. So as a view developer, you know, I'm thinking this this looks very familiar, except now we are actually including with this JSX our HTML and JavaScript in one file, which is kind of weird at first, but I could definitely see that this doesn't take that long to get used to. I mean, obviously class names, we want to put uppercase N. Now one thing I noticed is. If I wanted to do scope CSS, that's kind of out of the box in, in view. In fact, in view, we would normally have everything in, in one file. And in this case, we're actually importing the app CSS file, but I know that you could probably do, um, I kind of Googled this before I started the video that you can do modules. So you can kind of have scope CSS in there, scope CSS in that, that way. And I know you can also do, uh, you can also do uh, style components. I think that's real popular and put those in its own individual files and then style those and bring those in, which is kind of neat. Uh, you know, I, I definitely like the scope CSS better in Vue, just personal preference. You know, it's just really simple. The CSS is at the bottom of each component. It doesn't just doesn't feel quite the same. And I know you can actually do in, inline styles like this and you can set the class names. And I just don't like it as much. I also feel like sooner or later this gets pretty complicated too when you're doing these like maps and you're iterating through things. Uh, so let me let me create. Well, let's do one last thing to look at how you would do um, passing and compare that to view. So if I create a new file called um, I don't know detail.js. Okay, we do rf rsf. I think it is. So, okay, so this went in and created a default functional component for me, make it a little bit easier called detail. So I'm gonna say hello from detail. And I'm gonna see if I can import that into my app.js. So I'll import uh, detail from detail. And now I should be able to just use this inside here, inside my JSX, I believe. So if I just wanted to do detail and save it, uh, Cool, hello from details right at the top. So yeah, it's, that seemed to work fine. And it looks like instead of, you can pass values into it. So I'm just pass a text, hi and hello. 
and it looks like you know you don't get any errors here but if you go into the details this props is really uh, a, a bunch of objects that gets passed in so I should be able to grab high out of it and destructure it like this and put in high make sure I put in the squiggly brackets yeah so you can see a hello got passed in uh, yeah so you can do that and I can also pass in whole functions which is kind of interesting so just kind of playing around with this and and view like normally in view kind of the, I guess you call the idiomatic way of doing it is you pass values in you actually have to define the props in here and it looks like you in react by default you don't have to define your props but I know there's a library called prop types that allows you to do that which is another thing that's just a different philosophy in view they force you to define all your props coming in and you can and sort of have a, a sort of have a kind of type you can check the types and you get a warning if the type is wrong while on the react side you have to install a whole third party library to do it which is a little different you know i kind of prefer the view way where you have to mark all your types if you did this in view and you passed in a component and you did something like this and it wasn't defined it actually would put it um, at least in view three if you have a single node you would put it on the top uh, node or basically the top component in there that surrounds everything while on the react side it looks like you can just pull it out and use it anywhere you want it's also interesting that view uses something called slots where you can kind of define information and it looks like in in uh, this one if I put data like if I have a closing opening bracket here I'll close it and I put information in here like hello this is in between I'll save it like that data isn't being shown right here but you do have something called children which is a prop that comes out of here and then you can place this children anywhere and now see so you can see it's being shown here at the top this is in between which is is really cool that you can do that and I, I think there's a ways you can have sort of uh, multiple versions you pass in um, in between here maybe you have multiple text I think there might be a way to do that kind of like you have slots you have you can actually have name slots um, and there's also slot um, scope slots where you can have slots that talk back to the parent and it, I don't think that really exists in react and also another thing that's interesting is if I create a function in here uh, like like just create a function called you know, hello alert hello alert and I want to I know have a value passed in here and I'll have an alert right here with that val I can pass in this hello alert hello alert and we can pass it in hello alert and inside the detail here you can grab out the hello alert and I don't know I can create my own button here and um, one thing too is in view you would have an at sign for events or if you want to bind something you put this colon here and at sign is also the same as uh, doing v on but in react you would actually have to do these um, different events so instead of you do this on event so on click I think it is you can then have this equal an event so I can have this hello alert and then I can pass in a value to it so I'll say Eric I don't know and then inside here I'll do press me so if I'm coming back over here it actually got ran over and over again oops okay I fixed the error what I need to do is it looks like I needed to send over it as a function so when you click on function it triggers this hello alert so now I press it it shows hello alert as I expected and as a view developer this is a little bit weird because typically you don't from your parent component to your child component you don't necessarily oh and by the way I never used the set error I guess I could have caught the error here error um, and then have this do a set error error I think that would work uh, but typically you use a mint you emit events so you would 
instead of having um, instead of passing functions down from your parent component to your child component, you would use an event. You use basically custom events inside view, and then you can emit events from your child component back up to your parent component. So this is a little different because in really you don't have that inside React. You really don't have a way that I know of to really send events back from children back to parents. And typically, I guess the most popular way of doing it is just to pass your components or your functions down inside props, and then they can be triggered there. So that's a little bit different as well. So, you know, all in all, you know, it's, you know, I like it. I still think Vue is great. Um, Vue really works really well. Uh, you know, it's definitely, you, it takes a little bit of time to get used to just this, this syntax and using JSX everywhere. Uh, you know, I really like slot, um, scope slots, and I really like the way that integrates in, and I think of emitting events is, is, is fine. So doing it this way is, is different, but it works. You know, overall, I'm, I'm learning a lot. I think I'm going to do another video where we kind of deep dive into React even more, and I can go just one by one uh, and see the differences. Like, for example, computed properties don't really exist in React, but there is something called use memo, which you can kind of do the same thing where values get cached, and if anything inside changes inside your use memo, it gets redone again. So that's interesting. I know this use effect too. I think actually I had a bug here. I probably should have done something like this in my use effect so that way it doesn't get re-triggered over and over again. Let me see here. Like anytime something changes, it would have gotten re-triggered. So yeah, so that's probably something I missed right at the beginning. You know, it, I definitely see jumping in here wouldn't be too bad. And just learning all the different hooks is going to be, uh, would be, Kind of a lot of work, I think. There's, I think, use state, use effect, is probably some of the most common ones. But it looks like you can even do like a, a state management system. We in re, in the view world, you have Vuex, and you have sort of some ways of getting around using state management in Vue by using this provide and inject. And it looks like you kind of do the similar thing in React with context. So I'm definitely seeing some similarities between these two. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. You know, I still really think Vue is especially a little bit easier for beginners. You know, even for me, just remembering, um, you know, how to use use effect and using it correctly, and like, having this bug here where I forgot to put a, a function. You know, even though even that confused me a little bit at the beginning. So I think Vue like clicked really quickly for me. But let me know in the comments below what you think. Really appreciate it. And Vue still king.